Welcome to a new video. In this video we will discuss an AC to DC converter in a precision circuit application. We have seen in the previous discussion, as in previous videos, about the precision rectifier circuits. And we have seen this circuit, and we will use this circuit again, the precision full wave rectifier, in addition to an additional component in order to make this AC to DC conversion. Of course, we'll look at a design example step by step, and also verify these in SPICE simulations. Now, before we jump to our actual design example, let's first look at the block diagram, what this AC to DC converter circuit is doing. We have a specific input voltage, which is our AC input, which has some specific frequency and some, imp uh, some amplitude. Now, this will then be fed to a full wave rectifier. It will make actually the absolute value of this signal. So this blue line will be this red line. What you see also is that this frequency here is doubled when you go from this AC input signal to this absolute value of your input signal. Then it should be filtered, so we would like to have an actually a horizontal line, so constant, which is that's why we want to have a DC value. And then it will be processed further to get an amplification in order to compensate for this attenuation because of this low pass filter. And then you have your final DC output voltage. Now, what is the relationship between these filtered values and the actual value and also the input peak value we have here? Now, there is a nice diagram here which shows the relationship between those three elements. We have here this first peak, let's say, and this is then given here as maximum Vm, which is the maximum value of our input voltage, which is 100% in this case. Now, when you go after the filtering, the low pass filtering, you will get your average value, which is not 1% of the VM we want, because this peak value it is also what we want at the output as a DC value after rectification. So this average value is almost 63.7% of what we have here. So if you have here, let's say 10 volts as peak, you'll get only 6.37 volts. So this is then also, to, we also need to compensate that. That is the reason for having this amplifier here. So we will see that shortly in detail how we can do that. Now the operation principle, we already discussed this in great detail in a different video about the precision full wave rectifier. So we will now do the precision AC to DC converter and use there the precision full wave rectifier. So this exact same circuit. The only addition is this capacitor that will then make this a DC conversion, so from AC to DC conversion. We have again this node H here, which is our output voltage for this part, which is only this part, considering we can talk about this uh, uh, precision half wave rectifier. Again, this is discussed in a separate video. You can find this on my channel. This part is here the inverting summing amplifier. And this part here now, together with R5, so see the capacitor, that will create a low pass filter. Again, to filter out the frequencies we don't want. Now, for now, we ignore the capacitor C. So, how does this uh, circuit work? Exactly as before we have discussed, so the precision half wave rectifier is making the voltage here Vs going to this uh, circuit and then will produce here a voltage at node H. And that is then given by this relationship. If this input is less than zero, so negative, then we have no voltage at the output, so just zero at node H. And if you have a positive value for your Vs, so the positive part of your AC input signal, then the relationship is then given by this. You'll see here an R1 and R2 with a minus sign, so the ratio times this Vs here. So this is the R2 and R1. Now the inverting summing amplifier is doing the standard summing amplifier uh, expression, which see here the R5 as the feedback resistor, divided by R3 times this VH, of course with a minus sign, but you also have this VS, which is then also multiplied by the different ratio, of course now R5 over R4, again with a minus sign because of this inverting action. The total circuit is then the combination of these two, so you can then combine them and then look at the both conditions, and then you can create these two conditions here. This is exactly what we wanted, so we will like to have from this to this. So from the uh, full uh, part of our input voltage, we would like to have the absolute value here. And this will be also produced at the output if you just ignore this capacitor for now. 
Now for a full wave rectified output signal, we need to have, as we know, that for less than zero for the input, then your input must, the output must be then the flipped version of that input. And if your input is then larger than zero, that is then exactly as we wanted the output. That is again the absolute value circuit we have discussed in the block diagram. Thus so we can set, in order to make this, we need to make these equations valid to get this here. So if I look at this, I need to have R5 over R4, just one, because then I have, I have a minus one here. And since this is one, I need to have this at two. So that means if this is one, I need to make this two. So there are of course many options to do that, because I have only here two equations and a number of uh, unknowns. So we can just set to R1, R2, and R4, and R5. All of them are exact same, just R, define it as R. Then we can see that R3 must be then R over two. Look at that. For example, if I now take all these value of four resistors two kilo ohms, then I need here one kilo ohm because of this R over two. More options are possible, so this is not the only possible very, uh, option here. Okay. Now let's see step by step what this precision AC to DC circuit does. First AC input signal is then full wave rectified, so we can now absolute value. Then the full wave rectified signal is then pass through a low pass filter, so low pass filtered, and it will produce an average value. This average value is less than the peak value we want in the output, so the amplifier is then added to increase this average value to the input peak value. DC voltage is the average value of the rectified signal after filtering, and the source voltage or the input voltage is then given by this expression in general, which has the Vm as the amplitude and the omega as the radian frequency. Full wave rectified output voltage can be expressed by this expression mathematically, just the absolute value of your input Vs. You see that here. And if you now here have this Vf, which is the full wave rectified output voltage, then the average value of this signal is then given by this expression, just the integral. In order to now make the integral correct or more easily written, you, can, you don't have to uh, integrate all the way from 0 to t, but you need to integrate from 0 to t over 2, which is the one period. That's why it's shown here. And you also integrate from the lower to upper limit in this fashion. And then you have this Vs uh, here expressed like so. So you can just substitute that and work it out. This is really a standard uh, integration we see most often also in the power electronics. And this is then given by two Vm over pi. So two over pi as in scaling times this Vm. And that is an approximately 0 0.6362, which is actually what we had before. So 63.7% uh, of what we have at the input as the peak value will be then in the output as the average. So which is not 1%. So in the final design, we need to have a DC value equal to Vm. So we need to have a compensation for this attenuation due to that low pass filtering. So the amplifier make then the gain, the inverse of this one, which is then pi over two, which is then 1.57 approximately. So we need to have an amplifier which makes this gain. And that can be done by this amplif amplifier here, which has this R5, because that was the inverting summing amplifier. And the amplifier gain is then set by this R5, for example. So if you increase this, you'll also increase your gain. So I will set then this R5, what I have chosen before, which was in this case two kilo ohms. I will make that pi over two times larger. So it is then 1.57 times larger. And the capacitor C provides low pass filtering. So if you make this larger, you will have more filtering, of course, then your signal will be also much slower. So there's some trade-off. And this cutoff frequency can be then given by this simple RC circuit low pass filter formula. Again, here R5 and C here, because they, those two will determine how here the low pass filter cutoff. Now, since this full wave rectified signal has a double frequency, because if this frequency, for example, 100 Hertz, then this will be then 200 Hertz. So that will be then, in this case, the criterion for this specific capacitor is then given like so. So it's not two pi, but two times two pi, so four pi, and then you will see here the value. This cutoff frequency is most of the time chosen as the most uh, lowest frequency you want to filter out. So that's actually this uh, situation. So you need to also look at this F cutoff. Okay, now we look at our design problem. We like to design our precision AC to DC converter circuit. The extreme output voltage we have for our op-amps are plus or minus 8.5 volts. So these are the boundary conditions for our 
power supplies also. The input voltage is given here at 3 sine 200 pi t in volts, so the frequency is 100 hertz and our amplitude is 3 volts. The output voltage we will, will have an average value of 3 volts, so the DC is 3, but we are allowed to have a maximum peak peak ripple of 1%, which is then 1% of this 3 volts, which is then 30 millivolts. So if I look at my solutions, I can say the first calculation for the full wave rectified output signal, we need to have this. We already have discussed this, so let's go also through that again. So we also said that this is now what we need to set. So these ratios are for R5 over R4 and also this one. And then we have chosen that this was then the situation. 2 kilo ohms and 1 kilo ohm for this one. So this is already discussed as an example. And we will take exact same and of course we will have more options possible here in the final design we need to have a dc value equal to vm is 3 volts so which is then at the output we need to have a almost constant 3 volts so we need to compensate also this lowering because of this filtering as discussed before so the gain needs to be 1.57 so we need to increase this r5 so the new value of our r5 will be then pi over 2 times this 2000 so it will be then 3.14 kilo ohm approximately, a little bit larger. So the required capacitor can be then calculated using, the, uh, using this condition we have discussed. So it is 1 over this 4 pi cutoff frequency we will choose. And this R5 we have now here as the new value of R5. Now we select the cutoff frequency of our low pass filter as the lowest end of the audio range. In this case 200 hertz. But you can also say I will go for a little bit larger, a little bit higher uh, value depending on your application. That means our capacitor needs to be then much, much larger than this value here. So 1.3 microfarads approximately. So in this case, 1.27 microfarads. Of course, you don't take this in the practical sense. You will take maybe 100 or 50 or 20 times larger in order to make this filtering more effective. We will see what the hell have and uh, what kind of effect these values have in our circuit. So the components in summary for now is C of 1.27 microfarads. These R1, R2 and R4 are 2 kilo ohms. R3 is still 1 kilo. We have changed our R5 and I have chosen here a load of 500 ohms here too as an example. So here now we have now our simulation results. Uh, and first the circuit in T90i spike. You see here all the values in, in the components. I have chosen here the operational amplifiers and also the diodes. So in total we have this. And also I have now the dual power supply plus or minus 10 volts not plus or minus 8.5 because I know we lose some voltage here so that's the reason for having this 1.5 up and 1.5 voltage down in order to compensate for those losses okay let's bring the simulation circuit here and here are the simulation results we see here the blue line which is our input voltage to uh, 3 volts peak 100 hertz frequency and the red line is our input you see the first the transient and we get here some steady state swinging of our output now you see here if you zoom in, you get here some peak peak values. The maximum was 3.352 volts and the minimum is 2.59 approximately volts. That means the peak peak value here is 762 millivolts, which is way, way larger than the 30 millivolts we are allowed to have. We also see that our average value is almost 2.98 volts, which is less hair smaller than the 3 volts. So we need also a little bit increase the gain, so a little bit increases R5 also, but definitely we need to do something about this C because this ripple is really much, much than what we allowed to have. You can also see the values here about other things like RMS value, etc. So this is definitely not good, so we need to do something about this. And the capacitor will change, so we will change the capacitor from this 1.27 micro to 10 micro. So I will change it by a factor of 8 approximately. I will keep my R5 here as it was, so 3.14 uh, kilo approximately. So we will see what kind of uh, circuit we have. Of course, now the system is more sluggish or more uh, slower because I have changed my capacitor. So I will need to plot more time to see this really steady state situation. Again, zoom in here so we will see better what's going on. And if I now zoom in here, you see again the blue input red is the output voltage. Now you see the peak peak ripple. If you look at the maximum and the minimum, it will be then now here 98 or almost 100 millivolts, which is much, much smaller than before, but still way larger than the 30 millivolts we want. So it is approximately a little bit larger than three times what we want to have. So, And I also see the average value is almost the same as before, but still this peak 
big ripple is not what we want. So we need to continue. That can be done by again increasing this uh, capacitor, but how much? That is actually interesting to see because we have here almost 100 millivolts and we need to have 30 millivolts. So we actually need to go down by factor of three, maybe factor of 3.2, 3.1. So I can say let's also increase this by a factor of three. Now I will do that by a factor of four just to have some uh, headroom. I also need to get some extra uh, little more average value. So I also need to increase this a hair larger. So I did some experiment. So I increased that R5 and also increased this capacitor C240 micro. So I increased the capacitor 40 micro. I changed now my R5 from 3.14 micro uh, kilo ohms, I mean, to 3.17. So 30 ohms actually effectively not that much but it will have some effect we will see now here again since the capacitor has increased i am again getting much much lower so i need to plot really longer so in this case one second to see some decent plot and if i now zoom in this uh, part of my output which is this red curve i see some interesting things now maximum and a minimum that will then here, minus maximum minus the minimum will be then 25 millivolts, less than 30 millivolts maximum allowed peak peak ripple. That, that's fantastic. And I also see here the average value also from the simulation result is 3.007 volts. So 7 millivolts larger than I have to have 3 volts. So that's all perfect. So we have achieved our goal by adjusting actually the capacitor and this resistor R5 just hair larger than what we originally had. So we can say the design is completed. So in summary, we have the final design components as shown here, dual power supply we need, we have two op amps, and we have two diodes, and this is the capacitor we will use, and these are the resistors we will also use for this design. All right, this was our example, considering the design of a precision AC to DC converter circuit. We have discussed in general what this AC to DC converter circuit does in block diagrams. Then we have used our precision rectifier, full wave rectifier knowledge, and add here in the feedback path for the inverting summing amplifier this capacitor to create this DC output voltage. We also looked at the value of our peak peak ripple in our initial design and we have changed our components especially now this capacitor to get this uh, ripple what we wanted so in this case 25 millivolts is smaller than this 30 millivolts allowed here. So we have achieved our goal and this is now the design for this example. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that I can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.